It's the first day of the liturgical year. So uh, happy new year to you all as we gather to worship God who is loving us through these days and nights. Um, before we get started, I just want to take a moment. See, Roberta's got this slide here and I never use it. Um, I want to take a moment to think about the land that we're located on, wherever we are, whether we're here in the church in Union or whether we're in the church in Dorchester or wherever we happen to find ourselves. While we are the current stewards of the land, it was not always so. For thousands of years before Europeans and others arrived in this land, there were already peoples here who were stewards of this land. The Anishinaabe, the Adirondack, the Haudenosaunee, and others. And before there were people, the land was. As Christians and as Indigenous peoples alike, we acknowledge that the land which sustains us all, the land on which we live and move and have our being, belongs to God, our Creator. So we've got an Advent wreath this morning. So we've got a, a, a bit of liturgy that goes along with that. And the reading today is from Luke's gospel. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life and that the day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. Let's see. anniversaries and things like that or any prayer requests using the chat button um, and while I share the rest of the announcements so it is my sad duty to inform you that this past week on Tuesday Paul McMillan passed away and so the visitation for Paul is at Williams Funeral Home this afternoon 
two to four, and this evening at seven to nine, and the service is tomorrow morning at 11 at Williams. And um, also just a reminder that outreach this month is for the Christmas shop. And next Sunday, the first Sunday of December 4th, is the last Sunday to bring items for the Christmas shop for them to get them in time to distribute. Are there other announcements? How about birthdays or anniversaries or? And seeing none, we will continue on. This morning, we've got um, <clears throat> the Sunday School um, White Gift pageant. So things will be a little different. Um, there are a couple of pieces like the call to worship and so on that's um, written for three voices. So I'm the, I don't know, the unbolded print and Becky is the italics print and you're the bolded print or I think you're white and Becky's pink and I'm yellow or something like that. When life is messy and not going well. Remember that God is with you and come to worship. When people are blaming you for something you haven't done. Remember that God is with you and come spend time in God's community. When you step in the muck or hit your thumb with a hammer. Take a deep breath and remember that God is with you. Come find comfort today in this gathering of God's people. We know that God's with us. That's why we are the creation. And our opening hymn is number 43, Go Tell It on the Mountain. <laughs> frustrated, happy or sad, delighted or nervous, and sometimes just discombobulated. Sometimes we don't know what to feel. Give us the sign that it won't last forever. Remind us that a feeling is just a temporary thing, but you are always there for us, no matter what we are feeling. 
no matter how messy life gets. You are our God, and we are not alone. Thanks be to you forever and ever. Amen. We're going to sing Joy to the World. And whether you want to stand up for every hymn or not is I'm going to leave up to you. to 38. It was the sixth month of the year when the angel Gabriel came to visit a young woman named Mary. Mary lived in the town of Nazareth in Galilee. She was engaged to a man named Joseph. The angel said to Mary, greetings, beautiful Mary. God is with you. But Mary was confused. Who was this? Why was he saying these things to her? The angel continued, do not be afraid. Pray, Mary, God has chosen you to do something special. You are going to have a baby, and it will be God's child. You will name him Jesus, which means God saves us. This baby of yours will be a great person. He will be called the Son of God. He will be the ruler of his people forever and ever. Mary was still confused. How can this be? I'm not yet married. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come to you. This will be God's holy child. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary, no then Mary nodded and said, here I am, I'm ready. Let it be said as you say, then the angel left. We're hoping that throughout the service, everyone will help us out with the part of the sheep. That would be great. This is a disaster. It was so amazing and so awesome when the angel came to me. I was overwhelmed with wonder. I felt as if I could do anything, but now the reality is setting in. What will Jesus, Joseph say? What will my family say? What will my community say? How could God do this to me? I think I'm having a panic attack. Oh dear, I said yes to this. What will Joseph say? Will he abandon me? I really think I am having a panic attack. Wow. With you, you are not alone.
Matthew 1, verses 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus happened. Mary and Joseph were engaged, but they were not yet married. Mary told Joseph that she was pregnant with God's child. Joseph was a good man, and he didn't want to hurt Mary, but he was also confused and upset. Then an angel came to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Her baby is God's child. It's true. When her son is born, name him Jesus. He will also be called Emmanuel. That means God is with us. When Joseph woke up from his dream, he welcomed Mary into his home. Then when her baby was born, he, they named him Jesus. My life is a nightmare right now. I was working so hard to get ready for the wedding, building a house and all of the furniture that Mary and I would need. Then she comes to tell me she is pregnant. What am I supposed to say to that? She says this child is from God. What am I so supposed to say to that? I have been so angry. I love Mary. I want to care for her, but how could she do this to me? And then this dream telling me it will be all right. Okay, I'm a good person. I'll do what God asks, but my life still feels like a nightmare right now. God is with you. You are not alone. Chapter 2, verse 7. 
In those days, an order went out from Emperor Augusta. He said that all the world should pay taxes. Everyone went to their own hometowns to pay the tax. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the city of Bethlehem, because that was the place where his grandparents came from. He was engaged to Mary, and Mary was expecting a child. So they traveled together to Bethlehem. When they got there, it was time for the baby to be born. Mary gave birth to her first son. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. What do people expect that they can just come knocking at my door any time of the day or night and find a room, especially with the census going on and all these extra people? What do they think I am, a miracle worker? I was just tucked into my bed, everything done for the day, and then I heard it again, knock, knock, knock. It was a young couple. She was pregnant and she was in labor. What was I to do? I had no room. I told them that. But tough as I try to be, I've got a soft heart when it comes to babies. So I took them to the barn. I have no clue what they're going to do tomorrow. But for tonight, they have a warm spot, a bit stinky, but still warm. I'm heading back to bed. I do feel sorry for that young couple, though, having their baby in a barn. That's right. Now you go back to the barn and remind them of From the book of Luke 2, verses 8 to 16. Near Bethlehem, there were shepherds living in the fields. They kept guard over the flocks of sheep each night. Suddenly, the angel of the Lord appeared before them. The shepherds were afraid, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news, joyful news. Today in Bethlehem, the Savior has been born. Go and find the baby lying in a manger. Suddenly, the sky was filled with angels who sang, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace to everyone on earth. When the angels had left, the shepherds hurried to Bethlehem. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby in the manger. When the shepherds left the stable, they began to tell everyone about Jesus' birth. They shouted out praise to God as they returned to the fields. Mary listened carefully and watched carefully. She wanted to remember everything that happened that night, and Mary treasured all of this in her heart. (laughs) 
<laughs> it was amazing. No, awesome. No, tremendously outstanding, astonishing, marvelous, inspiring, remarkable, incredible, surprising. The angels, hundreds of them. No, thousands of them. The sky was full of them. I was there and I still don't believe it. And then one spoke and told us of God's peace. And then told us about a baby from God in Bethlehem. And that we should go and find the baby. And that's what we're doing, going to Bethlehem. I just can't believe it. It's so amazing. But wait a minute. We left all the sheep in the field. Oh, yikes. No one was watching the sheep. I don't know what to do. Ah, it's with you. You are not alone. Oh, yes, little lambs. You're so good at helping me remember that. chapter 2 verses 1 to 12. King Harold was king in Jerusalem when Jesus was born. Three wise travelers from the east came looking for the baby. They were following a star. They asked King Harold to help them find the baby. Where is the child who has been born, the one who will be the new king? We saw his star in the east and we have come to worship him. When King Harold heard this, he was frightened. He called together his priests and scribes and asked where the child would be born. Then Harold gave the wise travelers directions to Bethlehem. He said to them, go, find the child, and when you find him, let me know where he is. I want to worship him too. Then the wise ones set off again. They followed the star to Bethlehem. The star stopped over a house. The wise ones went in and found the baby and his mother. They knelt down and worshiped Jesus. Then they gave three gifts to the baby, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. A message came to them in a dream. They were told that King Harold wanted to kill the baby. So they didn't go back to Harold. They went home another way.
at the wrong way. Of all the people, I'm the one that makes some mistakes. You should have heard the arguments. We should go this way. No, the star is telling us to go this way. No, I'm sure it's this way. Talk about confusion. And then what to bring for a gift for a royal baby. Gold, frankincense, mirth. I thought it should be a soft blanket, stitched with gold embroidery, of course. Yes, there was arguments before we left. Confusion about which way to go. Confusion about which gift to bring. It's a wonder. We even got on the road. Somehow, we made it to Jerusalem. We were welcomed into a pres presence of King Herod because, of course, we are important people. But somehow, I don't trust him. Yes, he gave us a, poss a possible location for the child. But I can't be too happy about this baby. It doesn't seem to be his son. He said to return and tell him about the baby. But I don't trust this motives, his motives. It's all quite confusing. I'm not sure how we're going to make sense of all this. Now, which way to Bethlehem? Looks like my friends have decided which way to go. Though they aren't usually right about anything. They'll need my input. Confusion, confusion, confusion. Um, that's with you. You are not alone. One step at a time. Just one step at a time. We share be from the heart, just as yours was on that day, God of Bethlehem. May they serve those who look for welcome, those who struggle with loss and grief, those who need to be blessed by hope and love and healing. This we pray in the name of your child, Jesus. Amen. Loving God, we are here to celebrate and to receive the story of the birth of Jesus. Yet even as we celebrate, we know that there are many in need here and around the world. We think of those who won't be with family or friends for Christmas, those who are sad and grieving for a loved one, and all who are facing struggles and challenges of many kinds. And so we pray. May all the world Know your love and peace, O oh God. 
We think of all those around the world affected by drought or flooding, earthquake or hurricane or other forms of natural disaster. And so we pray. May all the earth We think of all those around the world affected by war, acts of terrorism, or acts carried, carried out against them by oppression, grievances, and so we pray. Oh God. Especially we pray for the earth and especially for the polar bears and other animals who are feeling the effects of climate change. May we, the people of the earth, find a path to heal the damage to our climate and to our earth. And so we pray. Oh God. Peace, oh God. We pray for all animals. For wolverines, koalas, red pandas, and all the wonderful creatures you have made, O oh God. And we, so we pray. We think of all who are sick today and all who are grieving. We think of those who don't have homes in which to live and those who aren't safe from abuse and violence at home. We think of those who are lonely and those who are being bullied. And so we pray. We think of those who are experiencing so many emotions this Christmas, especially those who are not feeling merry or joyous. And so we pray. We think of all women who are pregnant and all couples who are expecting a baby. We know they have worries as well as excitement. And so we pray. Yeah. We can have so many different memories and emotions at Christmas, like those there at the first Christmas. We can be happy, sad, joyful, angry, peaceful, and frustrating. Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, the wise ones, and the innkeeper all discovered you were with them. They found your peace with Jesus when Jesus was born. In the same way, May we hear and may we hear and people everywhere find peace in knowing that you are with us today and always. For Jesus came as Emmanuel, God with us. For this we give thanks, and we pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Make sure that you help create a world where everyone has full stomachs and a safe place to sleep. Go, make sure that everyone knows that God's love is with them, no matter what mess they are in. And remember, God loves his big love. 
God's arms can hold everyone in the world. God's heart keeps our hearts warm with compassion. Ah, God, God is, is with you. you. You are not alone, no matter how messy it gets. Thank <laughs> you.